Brian. Hey, Danielle. What's good? Nothing. Uh, I took <laughs> two days off from work. Yeah. And that's nice. So great. And I'm so overwhelmed Aww. to come back. I mean, I was overwhelmed before and I knew that, which is like why I needed a little break. But mm -hmm. um, like I'm gonna be, I'm I just stopped working and I'm gonna be working probably a couple hours after this call. God. It's nuts. What's happening? Got that hustle? I just, I am the only one in two departments and now like a third department is added to my plate. And um, that's just, <laughs> like I'll, is, is there a raise coming for your plate? Do you know, this is being recorded. I won't go into too much detail, but I, I may as well be a city employee. Okay. <laughs> you like there's, there's very low compensation. And then um, there have been four new positions since I started my job that have been announced that have like substantially higher pay grades than mine. Mm -hmm. And like anytime I ask, it is just rejected, 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 rejected. It's it's very frustrating. At Amherst? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Ashlyn Kradick. It's her Hi, first meet meeting with us. Um, I don't... Hi, Ashlyn. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Um, I, I wanted to check up and see where you're at with the process with um, the mayor's office in the city. So the update from what I understand is last week, the city uh, services went and processed it and then they approved it. And then it was supposed to go to city council. But when I looked for the minutes for that for last week, they were only discussing the election. So it still needs to go in this Thursday because I look for the minutes for this Thursday and yeah. it seems like they're going to officiate it then. And then that that's what I understand from the email that I got from, um, from the mayor's assistant. So. Oh, court. Well, thanks court. for the update on that, yeah, Ashlyn. Cause court. yeah, we're waiting for, I think you and two other members to join and we really need some new members. Mm -hmm. So I'm, we're happy to have you on the meeting. You just won't be able to vote on anything if we're doing any voting today. Of course. That's, yeah, but your input right. will be very uh, necessary because we love uh, new people on our board. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, you can go around and you can kind of see everybody's name. I'll change my name. It's just my like city thing. So um, and get everybody's. I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I've been either a volunteer or a staff member since 2008. Um, and now I'm the director and, uh, and I, I love working with everybody. So, and that's kind of my, what I do. So any questions, feel free. I think you already, um, I think actually you've already read on the onboarding document. Um, can we share that with you? Yes, I, I believe I got that like okay. in an early email. That's a decent overview. Hey, Kathy. Hi, just a quick question. Are we calling the meeting yet to order yet? I'm just for, I'm, you know, I'm changing the taking minutes. Uh, I, well, not really. We're just okay. doing a little like, okay. I'm going to wait till like 7.05 like we okay. normally do when we're together. Okay. Um, just to see if anybody, I know that Lori is not going to make it. She, okay. she left a message on my voicemail. Okay. And then um, Eamon is not going to be able to make it either. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So it's 7.05. This meeting is being held via Zoom and the audio video is being recorded. Mm -hmm. um, I have not received any public comments um, on our agenda from, uh, they were um, due by 5.30 today. So I've been never receiving any public comments. So this is the public comment period. Um, if anybody phones in or anybody that is not on the board. So Ashlyn, if you have any comments, you can, you can comment now um, or any questions. Um, 
So I I think I'm good. Okay. I I mean I think I'm okay right now. Um, if I have any questions uh, pertaining to uh, this in particular, I can probably email Danielle. Um, Perfect. At a later time. So. Sounds good. Um, so I know I was a little late with the meeting minutes. They I sent them out this morning. I was. Kathy, <laughs> I, I'm in charge, so I get to take all the blame for everything. Yeah, I know. It's all Kathy, right. Kathy has a tough, you know, thing, so we'll work on it. But I don't know if anybody, ha everybody, have a chance to look at the minutes. Wait, do we even? Let me look I at. Read them. I haven't seen yeah, the. Um, long. <laughs> I haven't seen the agenda. Oh, I did I? Oh, uh, upcoming meeting. This must be it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, two, there they are. One, two. Sorry, Daniel, <clears throat> Rachel. So, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have a right, right. Currently, we don't. We can't even review the minutes because okay. we don't have a right. um, a quorum. We're missing mm -hmm. Esther, Lori, mm -hmm. and Amon. Well, we got three out of six because actually, Rachel, you're still on the municipal board. That's what court okay. said. Okay. Um, Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what that means. Three out of six does not seem like a quorum to me because that's only 50%. So I think we should uh, table the minutes until our next meeting. Uh, how does is everybody- quor Is quorum two thirds? No, um, one- More than half. Half, half, half plus one. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So there's another word for the two thirds. It's like a majority, I think. Um, so we're gonna have to table those until next okay. meeting. Okay, um, great. So my apologies on that, uh, but we'd like to open up the Municipal Arts Council meeting. And uh, I don't know if everybody has the agenda in front of you, but I can put it into the, the chat right here. Uh, and sorry, I didn't get that to you, Ashlyn, but I'm gonna throw it into the chat right now. Hopefully I can just attach the file and then everybody can have it uh, right there. And then I'll also attach the minutes from the last meeting as well. Um, and we have you have her, our, her Ashlyn. We have your email address and stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, I have all the contact. As soon as um, I'll add her to all the our correspondence now. I'm out. Um, so, uh, right. um, let's see. So moving along. So we're going to have an artist reception committee, but that's tabled. Uh, the biennial. So I wanted to open up that. We have Ellen here, and um, we're. Does anybody all anybody else interested in joining the biennial subcommittee to start planning the biennial for next year? Yeah, we need people. Wow. It's mm. for visual arts, poetry, it's mo okay. for most movement. But uh, Ashlyn, we do uh, every two years, we do a large call that's open to Western Mass. Are you familiar with this, the Western Mass visual and poetry biennial? I believe um, I went to it once okay. uh, the last time when, okay. when I was for sure. So kind of you kind of have an you you kind of have an idea, so we're looking for some more people. Hopefully, a new board members that come on will join the committee. But uh, so I just wanted to see if the board wanted to talk about theme ideas, whether whether we want to have an open ended theme this this uh, for 2021, or if we wanted to come up with some ideas for a specific theme. So I want to leave it open to the whole board right now to, to throw some ideas out there. Um, and then we'll have them in the minutes so we can go back when we start going on further planning and maybe we can get, mm -hmm. you know, one or two more people on the biennial committee so we can have uh, four people, which is, I think is a good number. Mm -hmm. Three or four is good because it's a lot of work and planning. Um, Brian, so. is there anything you can say about the biennial historically that we like want to stay true to or that we want to keep? Or just can you give a little context for? Uh, I feel like the committee every time we have it kind of shapes that and now I can you know respond to specific questions and Alan can as well for our history of how it's been done and now I know how I my opinion on how I like to, to be done which is like you know I like to have 
the gatekeepers of the art community in Western Massachusetts, be able to see all the artists, you know, cause we get over 300 submissions every time. I want to put that art in front of people that are gatekeepers at like, whether it be um, art magazines or university museums or um, galleries. So, you know, the first thing we have to, I feel like plan is, you know, reach out to people with to figure out who we want to go ask to be the jurors. And then we have to look at who, how we want to shape the, the call, what theme we want to go with. Um, so those are two things that we have to ask, you know, favors for and have this like really collaborative um, subcommittee. Go ahead, Kathy. The other thing that I think is, is also just more recently and because Ellen and I are both on the Poet Laureate Committee mm -hmm. is that we also have part of the event is having um, uh, a live event with, with poetry or um, reading. So that's another yeah. part of this, um, of the biennial that we, in the last two years, I think, or so, Ellen, I can't mm -hmm. remember. Yeah, we this started. will be the third time. Yeah, yeah. we started including poetry and, um, you know, literature as, as part of the um, celebration. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think last year we, last time we had our open call. Mm -hmm. Just I, thought it was, yeah. I thought it was, two, that was two times ago. I thought, last time we had, um, we didn't have an open call, if I remember correctly. Um, let me bring okay. up the... Uh, okay, let's hear. Yeah. Let me see what we got for the last biennial. I'm going there right now. I'll look on... Yeah. Oh, my... My internet is very slow with the Zoom meeting on it. I thought it might be open because I remember we it was a challenging, it was challenging to hang. Mm. And um, you probably know better than me, but I, I was. Uh, yeah, at I one point, I feel like it wasn't going to be a theme, but then I think it was. I oh, no, it's it from seed to fruition. Oh, that's right. That was mm -hmm. it. Here's right. The, Oh, uh, loosely, loosely, uh, yeah, loosely interpreted. The, mm -hmm. That right there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I can help out with that, Ellen. You can put me on the committee. All right. Excellent, Kathy. Right. It'd be great to have somebody who. Um, I mean, I, I think the, the big thing will be to find somebody who really can do the, like, the computer end of it. Okay. Um, Esther had done it. And then, um, whatchamacallit, uh, mm -hmm. um, Kevin. Kevin, yeah. Kevin. So yeah, what does that entail? It. I mean, I guess I'm just not sure. Maybe you can find out. I mean. um, they, though, they, when they did it, they had to kind of oversee the, you know, mm -hmm. all of the submissions. Okay. And, yeah. you know, put all the information up there. Okay. And then they also were present with the jurors. Okay. Of okay. course, this, this year, uh, well, I'm thinking by next fall, it should be, mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be virtual, but they might prefer to do it virtually. Yeah. You right. know, now that we're so much more comfortable doing stuff mm -hmm. this way. Well, you know, I'm wondering about, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing something like that, but maybe having a conversation with Esther about yes, definitely. how they managed, organized it. That could mm -hmm. be helpful. Yeah, I could picture myself doing it also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when we have new board members coming on, I'm sure they want to, yeah. that's well, a, something that yeah. it was helpful. They were so computer savvy, you know? Yeah. But the other thing is that maybe, and, and this is like what we do, we're doing and we should chat a little bit. We'll talk about poet laureate is including community members, other people from outside the arts council to join us that may have some expertise in, in something like this, um, mm -hmm. you know, these committees as we do with the poet, the poet laureate. I think, um, so we, I know one, one person was really excited about being on the board, but actually doesn't live in Florence, but still, or live in Northampton, Florence or Leeds. Mm -hmm. And this, the, I'm talking about Zoe Sasson, Brian. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. And I think many of you might know her, she's a local artist and. Um, know her parents. <laughs> she also did one of our, um, we gave her a grant to do uh, uh, an exhibition at APE Gallery highlighting Northampton High School arts uh, programs, arts teacher, something. Um, but she, I think would be a really great 
Finn and might want to come on and just assist with this okay. project. That might be a good segue into into including her. Is it is it Z O E and then Zashin as in her mother was my physician at one point? <laughs> <laughs> um, possibly. I can I can email okay. um, the the three just of you minute. just to connect you if you want to chat. I think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Send her send her stuff to her or right. vice versa. I Sounds will. Great. Uh. On the note of themes, mm -hmm. I wonder if um, <clears throat> I'd, I mean, this is borrowing a little bit from work I do elsewhere, but um, I think a popular one might be like Black Art Matters. Mm -hmm. And it could be people responding to the movement for Black Lives. I mean, I don't know. I hope it is, I hope it's less relevant in a year, but I think it will still be extremely mm -hmm. relevant in a year. Um, but that's just one idea that might mm -hmm. spin okay. others. Mm -hmm. Ellen, I'm wondering um, if you had any thoughts since you've been working on this for a couple of years about one, the theme and two, the value of the theme in terms of what, you know, what you've seen, the, the work that you've seen over this time. And maybe Kathy, you too, since, mm -hmm. you know, you've been involved in some way. Mm. My favorite theme of all of them that we've had was self-portraits. Mm. Mm. I thought that was just a really fun theme. Yeah. Um, well, you know, sometimes but, it might help. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, but we're at the beginning of this anyway, so. Yeah. You know, in terms of helping people to focus or, or I, because it could go anywhere, and I think it. And also, it might help with the the jurying and and just kind of it might help with the entrances and stuff like that. Um, that you know, sometimes having you know a theme is is great in terms of because people could be everywhere, and I think to try to organize things and um, consider, um, especially around jurying and and. You know what? What are we really looking for? And looking for things that matter, etc. Um, I think having a thing to me, it seems having a thing helps you a little bit to just to to kind of all get on the same page per se. So I, I'd like to throw out an idea that I've been <clears throat> struggling with um, for some time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps since my sons decided to get me an ancestry kit. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, and I've been fascinated by this kind of what seems like um, an oxymoron, you know. Um, on the one hand, everybody's very excited about finding out their cultural identity and their roots. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> on the other hand, we're finding people, we're finding it very problematic for people to become more tribal. And, it, you know, I just wonder about um the kind of the dissonance there and the tension between those two things and and if there's something in there that that might um mm. might be worthy of a theme you know mm. you know so it has to do with identity but also uh your <laughs> your connection to your species and being a, a living being and right. you know being okay. where we are yeah yeah yeah, that, that's true. And it could cause, you know, a really rip, you know, especially, you're right, the whole notion of tribalism and what does all that mean in terms of uh, division, et cetera. Um, hmm. It's very simplistic, but I, you know, I always thought of the U.S. as a melting pot. Mm. You know, we're always known as the melting pot. Right. And yeah, sometimes I thought we should just yeah. all, yeah. We, should do, we should do that. We should all do the melting pot. And hmm. lots of lots of intermarriage or interrelationship. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So we'll have to decide if we want to do something, yeah. you know, political or. Um, and it, things that I hate to say, but um, it's almost like things have been COVIDized to death sometimes. <laughs> Even though it's 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 a big part, but it's like, whew, it sometimes you get like. Wow. We could do something about, I mean, thinking ahead to a year from now, mm -hmm. that this will probably be over. You know, we could do something about the end 
of mm. you know yeah well, the end in the beginning ellen is the optimist of our group and <laughs> the beginning yeah, yeah. The beginnings mm. Mm -hmm. Well, and that could be something I think, you know, people, you know, have ideas and stuff. This is great. Uh, maybe just to get in touch with you, Ellen, or one of us and put further pursuit. Yeah, you can, yeah, I can throw them out. I'll collect mm -hmm. them. Okay. Um, but I mean, we can also just throw them around at a meeting also. Yeah, yeah. So, but if something grabs you. Mm -hmm. You know, last year, the C2 fruition, that was sort of an open call. Yeah. Because it was so broadly defined. Oh, yeah. That, How did you come uh, up with that high title? You know, why was that? Who came up with from C2 fruition? I think it was you, Alan, but I <laughs> I don't think it would be me. <laughs> um, I don't I think I would have thought of that. I'm <laughs> much more concrete. <laughs> Is I put all the past themes it? into the into the chat below for everybody. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Where is it? So, so I have a chicken egg question. Do we find out or do we know the poet laureate before we know the biennial? Because I wonder if we could actually like if we know who the poet laureate might be if we could mine their work for a kind of open ended mm. theme or phrase mm. kind of like from okay. and like there's something kind of nice about linking them. Okay. Or I don't know what the timeline is for choosing the Poet Laureate. I have to look it up. We should choose a Poet Laureate by April. Okay. So, so it's feasible. Oh, wow. It's feasible, but we like the call goes out then too. So it is feasible yeah. Um, yeah. that that would be, that would, mm. that would work. Mm. Mm. Wait, um, what's the timeline for the Poet Laureate? I'm pretty sure it's uh you see, God. We put out a call in April. No, we, no, we don't put a call. We, we I, th I thought the timeline was uh, that we we, we announced in April. Um, wow, well, we got okay. much now, Ellen. You know, yeah, we've oh. lost all the members who actually knew something about poetry. Yeah, although you know, we could well, maybe we can check back with each of the members and and go and then not just the, you know the members now or you know, asking, you know, other, other, uh, you know, we can check in with Karen, see if she might know yeah. some people yeah. to, to join the group again. Yeah. I mean, if, if Alan wants to um, just to come on to that, that's a possibility. Uh, that's the, uh, yeah, I would probably uh, get in touch yeah. with Jenny also. Yo, Jenny. Yeah. Where's Jenny? She'll, she she probably would help. Okay. All Good right. Idea. Ellen, you and I, we should um, talk. Yeah. And okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. We Thank you for mentioning. I, I was looking at her face and I'm like, oh, God, what's Jen? I didn't say Jenny. I'm like, what's her name? What's her name? I like Danielle's idea because Ocean was like our finalist last time, and there was yeah. like a tie between yeah. um, him and Karen that we just go with Ocean. Oh. Well, that'd be great if he would if he'd be willing. No, I think no he, he, it was somebody else. Yeah, no, it was Ocean. I think it we was Ocean and Karen him. Schofield. And then yeah. we had to go outside of the committee and ask Betsy to do to look at everything. And yeah. then she did the, the time. Yeah. Oh, there was, some, there was somebody else. No, I no, it wasn't. Ocean. It was no, you're right. two, Ocean told us he couldn't he could. um, ahead he of time. First. We had approached him. Um, he t said he couldn't be considered because he just was too busy. Yeah. And then there were two, um, it was Karen and this other woman who I yeah, can't her name either. Me. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Oh, I can yeah. ask again. Okay. Let me see. Mm. So we have to, I guess we should move on yeah. and then keep that open. Okay. Uh, start thinking about who should we get for jurors in mm -hmm. the theme. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we have the past themes in the, the text right here, the chat. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so, you know, portraits, landscapes, water, be here now, motion to motion, give mm -hmm. us your best from see it to fruition. So the idea. Do you remember the, there was one before, there was one in 2000. Oh, no, maybe. Hmm. 
I think landscapes was first. Yeah. And then self portraits. Yeah. Oh, was it? Okay. So yeah. I'll, I'll change yeah. that. We were trying to, maybe you can help me put together this uh, web page. Um, so landscapes, it was first and then portraits. Yeah. Okay. So I just, I shared this uh, web page information. We want, I want to make like a landing page mm -hmm. for the biennial. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would love some help uh, with information on that, Ellen. Okay. And, yeah, um, I'd love to come in. <laughs> so I got to get just the jurors from 2007, 2009. I'll try to look through my old information and then we'll have a nice landing page for the biennial. Because mm -hmm. usually it's just in the, it's, it's, we usually just have the current call, but if we have the history of it, it'd be help to get right. some context on our website. Um, and then I shared the poet laureate uh, oh, good. document right there, and how we yeah. should choose the poet laureate. I think we are mm -hmm. definitely yeah. uh, behind a little bit. Yeah, that's on all right. That. Okay. So you guys can take a look at that yeah. as well. All right. Okay. That's okay. Ooh, nice one. Um, before you do, I have one. <clears throat> I have one other idea. Mm. Um, you know, if if it's if Ellen's. Um, Ooh. projection is accurate and we are in a good reasonably good shape uh, so that we can have live events um mm. you know children have really struggled a tremendous amount during this period you know young children mm. um you know not that we haven't all but i think you know mm. they're the least equipped in many ways to deal with this and and i don't know if it's ever been a focus of a poet laureate to have somebody who specifically writes children's poetry, um, but also um, to have a focus for the biennial also be children's art or children. Um, so something having to do with children. So, so it could be kind of a celebration of, of life, of children, of beginning. So another idea. Mm, really interesting idea. Mm. We're always thinking the grown-ups, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that mean that we would get like children's art mm. well, submissions yeah. or just artists that are submitting like themed stuff? Um, I'm not thinking just of children's art, but yeah. You know, related to children, but that that could be. I mean, you know, children's books are amazing anyway. I yeah, mean, mm -hmm. a lot of great yeah. artists. Get somebody from the Eric Carl Museum. Yeah, I can talk to somebody there mm -hmm. and see if they help us do that. But um, mm -hmm. I like the idea, so we'll add it to the idea bin. I liked your other idea too that you put in the chat. Origin stories is interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. Mm -hmm. Ellen and Kathy, if you needed more people to assist with poet laureate work, does this have to be someone on the committee or could it also be external? Okay, well, I have a Yeah, I think it would be good to have a, you know, to help with it. But just as I was saying with the other um, committee, you know, to get somebody on it, you know, they could be a part of it and that would be perfect. Any of our subcommittees can have people that are not on our board. Yeah, yeah that can be, yeah. They just can't vote on the stuff right. we vote on. Yeah, yeah, but they can, you know, and that's the nice thing about with these committees having having other, you know, people elsewhere from the community, you know, yeah, to join us. And I think it's also a nice, it's a nice way to get people to kind of get a sense about who we are and with, the, and also as yeah, I think we talked about before, is some people just don't have the time and energy to 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 fully participate and this might be a, a great way you know it's time limited etc to kind of contribute in a way um eight way to get people to join further yeah, right yeah. that's right whether they yeah. like it or not they can like try, try and see how it is yeah and yeah they, exactly. they love it or maybe it's not for them and they, they yeah, know yeah, exactly so that that makes me think of something else um on friday i did a workshop at the high school for well, I wasn't at the high school. I was actually in the same room I'm in now, but, but for the teachers, for all the teachers, uh, and I've been working uh, in preparation for that, was working with the principal of the high school. You know, Lori Valancourt, Brian at all, you know? I do um, not. Um, well, I really like her and, and her associate principal. Um, and, and what made me think that maybe it would be great to ask her 
um, and, and maybe she'd put me in touch with some other faculty members who might know of students who might be interested in poetry, for example, mm -hmm. but in, involved, getting involved in other parts of our program, you know, joining other committees because, oh, oh, sure. you know, some of them may, may benefit from mm -hmm. having opportunities. Oh, yeah, being part of the biennial. That would be so great. I, I can ask, I can contact Lori and, mm. and ask her if she could, you know, do a little research about whether there are any high school students who, sh who, are, who might be a great addition to work with uh, you guys on Poet Laureate piece. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Or like the art teacher or, yeah. you know, the literature teacher, anything like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, we always send out, a, you know, make the high school part of the call. Mm -hmm. when we, you know, right. Looking for submissions. Yeah. Great. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Ashlyn, the biennial, just for your info, is all of Western Mass County. So Franklin, Berkshire, Hampshire, and Hamden. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very yeah. good to know. I was wondering if it's just the city or if it's like the surrounding areas as yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. It's, and it's been really nice to have it be so broad. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a free and open call for any artist to apply. Uh, and then we, again, we get three jurors that are um, uh, gatekeepers usually. And we try to get uh, all of the Western Massachusetts art scene in front of these gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. So they can identify uh, maybe some things that they can either have in their gallery or maybe the museum mm -hmm. or things like that. So, mm -hmm. and then we show the, the jurors pick the best of, and then we show it at, at the Hosmer gallery at Forbes library, like the place that you went and saw that show, Ash. Yeah, do, do, we, do we also have already, do we have that that October? Yeah, already Faith already, yeah, Faith always emails me and that's all oh, Good, 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 excellent. Um, yeah, that's what I thought, but okay. So with some good ideas, um, I think mm -hmm. that the, the, the committee should together, Ellen, Lori and Kathy should have a meeting soon in the next mm -hmm. two weeks maybe if mm -hmm. possible to identify um, some themes. Um, you guys can loop me in on that if you wanna sit down mm -hmm. with me on Zoom. Um, and then mm -hmm. hopefully we can recruit another board member. Uh, it, is, uh, mm -hmm. it is tech dependent. Um, mm -hmm. So it would be nice to have somebody with uh, some tech skills like Eamon or somebody, a newer board member that can understand how to use the call system that we use. It's a newer one. I have some mm -hmm. idea, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it'd be nice to have uh, a, a board member as well that has uh, a good grip on that, that whole, the whole call system we use. Um, as a uh, digital artist, uh, I think I have a decent um, right. understanding. So I would be interested in joining that yeah, board yeah. if it's not too early no, to no. do that. Okay. Yeah. I'll add you to the uh, subcommittee. There you go. Welcome. Yay. That's awesome. Thank you. And then yes. I'll uh, add you as an admin to our call system. So it's, okay. it's, they're always really annoying, all of them. The one that we use, I'll add you to. I forgot what the name of it is, but I'll, I'll send you uh, an admin thing and we can figure that out. Right. Um, Kevin Pomerleau handle it last year and I used to do it before with a different system but he had a lot of problems I had problems with it but in the end it you'll we'll be able to figure it out so Sounds that's great. exciting thank you so great. much yay yeah um yay. uh so we can talk more about the biennial stuff at the next meeting and I hope that um the four members can coordinate a, a, a meeting uh, subcommittee meeting on zoom at least like a half hour or an hour in the next two weeks you can mm -hmm. me on those emails wow. um ellen you're on top of it because you're you're the origin story of the biennial okay is ashlyn in our uh I'll, our forward email? You, I'll forward you her email right now yeah good i'm also starting a thread with kathy ashlyn brian and zoe okay. just right i don't need oh. to be on here calls or anything but i'll still have ashlyn's email address yeah i i haven't seen zoe since she's younger <laughs> much younger neat Ooh. wow i like the exit wounds that would be great yeah, i like that theme um so let's see um our next agenda item if we're pretty happy with what we got there thank you for all of your input everybody mm -hmm. uh is the cinema 
committee and you know it's we're not really doing much this year like we've talked about in the past but um george myers the general manager of amherst cinema contacted me and we started a conversation around um a collaboration with cinema northampton uh, to have a drive-in movie um series possibly at the uh fairgrounds in northampton Ooh. um there's been one meeting between um the, the cinema northampton members and george that took place two weeks ago uh and we're moving forward our only hurdle i think is going to be the board of health Ooh. and the uh if we get um we, we like clamped down on a date of where we want to do it's going to be spring 2021 we're looking at i'm sure rachel knows all about it and uh is she part of the committee no she works for amherst cinema oh, <laughs> right right uh, i knew that but i didn't know she was part of whether she's part she's of not part of the cinema committee i'd love to have her in the cinema committee but i'm sure she has a little, too much cinema all day so i think she all wants right. to look at other stuff Thank you. Gotcha. um so uh so i work you know i we work with northampton Nova media which includes mm -hmm. al williams and um dave and then we work with forbes library and that's um mm -hmm. Dylan? Uh, Dylan, yeah, Dylan Gaffney. So they all met and we, they, I actually missed the meeting, but they all came to an idea where we're going to collaborate and uh, we're looking forward to it. There might be other live, um, like a live music piece of it in the beginning. And, you know, my idea is to make those like circles and not have it as a drive in, but like have parking and then circles where families can sit in circles mm -hmm. and kind of like gather in their little like COVID bubbles um in the spring so that's mm -hmm. exciting i'll update you guys uh everybody yeah uh, well, next month great and you saw that uh, not too long ago east hampton had um or was a music but they had the little bubbles and stuff like that and I, I we talked about it um the at the jazz festival because of you know people were involved with that um with the music and uh it went it turned out really well um, yeah so they've been doing those ticketed shows over at the vineyard too um mm. and they do the similar thing oh, yeah. um like mm -hmm. that um i haven't seen well we i just you know with northampton our uh director of our board of health is very very strict and uh it's been really difficult mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do any mm -hmm. uh in-person yeah. shows right now so i'm gonna mm -hmm. put together a, a proposal oh. with our Mm -hmm. um the co collab co collaboration of drive the you know with cinema northampton and okay. get all the details we can and come up with a plan so that's the cinema update uh for now mm -hmm. um i'm also looking you know i'm gonna start to search for kids best fest for mm -hmm. february um i had a interesting zoom meeting like last month with a gentleman from new york city who is uh who basically does this like international Latin film uh, festival and he collaborates with like a lot of big film festivals and he's from Cuba mm. and um, I'm interested maybe to look at a lot of different um, films coming from, you know, work with him mm. and look at a, a lot of different films that we can work with that with mm. Latin cinema for Kids Best Fest. That's so great. I mean, I like that idea, when, you know, in terms of, you know, bringing the other, you know, around in different languages, but, you know, with, with what's going on politically, I think that'd be great. Yeah, I, I, what I want to do with other things, I try to get them contacted with Academy and then with, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with Animer Cinema as well. I think he can bring a lot of different, uh, mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. interesting um, directors mm -hmm. and film here to this area. So mm -hmm. I look forward to, to working on that with him. Mm -hmm. So that's about all I have for the cinema update. There's no Northampton Film Festival this year. There's no cinema in Northampton this year. You know, we're just looking forward to 2021 for the cinema to do mm -hmm. more cinema in town. Um, all right, uh, equity committee. I don't know if we mm -hmm. have anything to discuss right now. I put tabled, but if you have anything to bring up, Danielle or any of our committee members, please bring, you know. I have an for the equity committee, but I'm wondering if Kids Best Fest could be the Emerson mm -hmm. Cinema collab. We've like, done it in the past. Even um, if it's online, like if we could use, I don't know. This it's a mm -hmm. regular question. Really. Okay, no, no, it's 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 possible. If we're gonna do it online, it's an interesting idea. Um, huh. The difference between the two models, though, is that uh, Emerson Cinema charges, and we I never charge mm -hmm. for Kids Best Fest. Mm -hmm. 
run a donation model and it's like you know usually i, I just don't even bother i just ask people mm -hmm. to donate and if you can't afford it you get in and they usually in, in the past and i'm not you can speak i don't want to speak for you rachel but in the past it's usually like the same um they do the bugs bunny thing every year during the school vacation week it's the same cartoons and we do a kind of a different programming model where we like we like kind of like hunt films that are like new or different or foreign language um so it's two different models i've i've worked in the past with carol on it and it was we just did co we co-marketed and we really didn't actually collaborate much besides the co-marketing piece mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but i'm willing to work rachel if you want to start planning ahead of time i don't know if you'll be the director there executive director there um it come february <laughs> definitely not. hopefully hopefully don't find anybody and then the interim director becomes the, the, the executive director. are you the interim director rachel very very briefly <laughs> God, congrats. Thank you. No, i think we are like weeks away from hiring a new director so um well. <laughs> and that actually ties into answering danielle's question and and um the point that brian made which is like we're in a leadership transition mm -hmm. and previously um yeah par partnerships were largely um were largely like shared marketing um and so i don't know what the new like leadership model will bring mm -hmm. for thoughts on on partnerships moving forward but um yeah i think previously it was kind of more more of a closed door than an open one so um i think uh uh i'll, I'll report back if there's okay. movement in that area well when there's the new director i think we should we should uh we should revisit it because mm -hmm. the idea i have is like i you know i can pay for all the movies you know whatever i can bring the idea to the the new director or you can think about it it's just like we pay all the film fees and then we can people can mm -hmm. either go to amherst or northampton to go see them right That's you know great. we can like have both films running at both theaters on the same day or something like that i don't know just ideas mm -hmm. and then do just a donation model only a donation only model if you can during that week but and then that's good marketing it's goodwill marketing mm. um so it's all about collaboration nowadays it really is yeah mm -hmm. really. yeah I, I honestly think um for virtual events it's so smart because you just pull from more or less yeah yeah whole things and when um, there's no limit you know and there and when money is really not like when revenue is really not like up for grabs yeah. all to, all that much with virtual right. it's not competitive and, yeah i do think there's there's more room for it there mm -hmm. oh, good. Good point. um mm -hmm. Yeah, we're probably gonna be doing. Yeah, I, I got. Um, we're trying to think about. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that and the ink piece because. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, any more cinema ideas right now? I love the like. I would love to collaborate with Amber Cinema. Mm -hmm. We'll just wait till they get a new director in there, and then we can mm -hmm. move forward. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe you or George didn't apply. I was kind of aghast that that happened. I was hoping that one of you would apply, but um, um, that's, I heard that you didn't. <laughs> so I was kind of bummed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Not, I, I I'm feeling there. There's some really good applicants. So uh, all right, good, uh, good, good. Nice announcement to make soon. Sweet. Yeah. Um, moving forward on the Can agenda. I just, yep. Ask something. I had thought that the equity. You know, mentioned the equity committee, but mm -hmm. I thought it was merged in with the grant committee. Is that not true? I thought I had saw that. No. No, it's the. The okay. same members on both. Oh, okay. But okay. I feel like there's there there's sometimes they're separate, but okay. they're they they I feel like they have a lot of uh, overlap. But I feel like yeah. The, okay, because I read that was one of the notes because I cut and paste some things to like as a as a yeah format here. Okay, all right. So on that we can move up to the grant round, which opened on uh, October first. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. let me log in right now. I haven't seen if we, they gave us the money because they we're waiting on the. We're waiting on the state budget to see how much we're going to get uh, allotted. Uh, so they haven't really, I have all the things set up. I did our annual report. Uh, not yet available. Still unknown. Okay. Um, so we don't know how much we're going to be giving out. 
but mm-hmm. you know it's there's a there's a deficit in the budget mm-hmm. not as bad mm-hmm. as it was um i thought it was going to be um which is good i had like an hour long talk with the guy who's like the finance uh guru at mcc last week uh michael ibrahim and uh we got i got some inside info uh we're just waiting for them to do the state budget it's probably gonna be, you know I, you know we had up to we had, i think we got fifteen thousand last year or 14 something which is the most we've ever gotten in my time with the arts council so i think we're gonna go back to like maybe 10,000 or 11,000 is what I'm thinking of. Hopefully we get that much to give out. Uh, so the accounting is done with the, the auditor. That's all set. I'm just waiting to get the allotment from the state and then I can finish that annual report. Uh, and then we can post how much we're giving out. Uh, mm-hmm. But what's really most important is tomorrow night, we're having our grant round workshop. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do have an MCC member joining us. Um, I'm going to give the mic to Danielle on this one, and she has a little bit more info about what we're going to be doing tomorrow night. Sure. I think Mina is actually coming Okay. on the call. Um, originally, there was going to be a rep, and then a bunch of things changed, so I think she's coming. Um, I asked her to just walk us through the platform and give any tips for how to use the platform to users because that seemed to be what was most helpful last time but actually we haven't had like a planning call or anything so we it might be a little um informal uh which i guess could be good um but that was the ask i need to her Mm -hmm. and then i think like rachel and freeman and i also haven't had a planning call about it so maybe we can just use this time to brainstorm what how we want to start i think it might work for us to lay out our priorities and and share some of the tweaking that we've done maybe share our um our equity statement to kick off and like the goal and the vision for for what we do um and then maybe hand it over to mina for her to walk through the platform and then share more about what happens once we receive the applications does that sound Mm -hmm. useful Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think maybe having the like the MCC portion and the Northampton Arts Council portion be um, like one at a time rather than back and forth might might be easier because also the um, the MCC folk might uh, need to leave after they present. I'm not sure if they want to hang out for the whole like rest of the if yeah. you get some some newbies you don't want them to be confused either yeah you know to understand who the mcc is and who the lcc oh, is yeah yeah you know just that difference i yeah. did ask nina to walk through the difference and like share more about mcc's work and then okay. so if we want to start there then that could be fine maybe like mm-hmm. Brian does a welcome and then yeah i can up. welcome and then i think mina should go i'll just introduce the like, like we did last year i'll introduce mina and she'll go on and then she'll do a presentation and she can leave if she needs to and then Mm -hmm. i can introduce you know the board members and you know we can just go over i have esther's notes from last year's presentation and we can just go over that quickly and then i think the biggest part of the whole workshop is people getting to ask questions right Mm -hmm. so i think it's like you know 10 minutes to mina 10 minutes to us and then try to Mm -hmm. save a portion of the workshop for people to ask questions Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then as part of your announcement, Brian, you'll be talking about the equity statement, of course, right? Sure, I can, I can, uh, I can, I can. Yeah, do let's see, I mean, statement. yeah, uh, we can also do that after Nina speaks. Okay. Yeah, right. It feels like it'll be too heavy at the. And you can announce that as well, Danielle, if you want as well. Hmm. I'm just going to okay. introduce. I'll just introduce. This is you know Mina Kim from the program officer from mm-hmm. the Massachusetts Cultural Council. And she's here to talk about the process of applying on the online Good. portal, mm-hmm. as well as the difference between LCCs and the MCC. Good. And when she's finished, I can thank her and I can say, um, I'd like to introduce our equity and our grant round subcommittee of the Northampton mm-hmm. Council, mm-hmm. Danielle Madeo, Rachel Hart, and Freeman Stein. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, you know, in their work and blah, blah, blah. And then Danielle can talk about the equity statement that she helped champion. And then uh, 
Then maybe I can pass it to either Rachel or Freeman to talk about our grant priorities. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to um, to try and be the best Esther I can be because she did such a good job last year. <laughs> um, but just to recap for for everyone, Esther mostly walked through the three main categories that we that we rank the grants on: mm -hmm. so artistic merit, mm -hmm. uh, feasibility, and community impact. And she she um, spent a good amount of time, based on board feedback from from last year and and ongoing. Um, she spent a lot of time talking about mm -hmm. the budget because that seems mm -hmm. to be the most common. Mm -hmm tripping point with grant applications, mm -hmm. specifically when um, when applicants don't list all of the expenses uh, that it takes to put on a program. I think some um, I think we've learned over over these application rounds that people um, applicants need to be encouraged to list uh, list the things that they're not paying for, including their own time. Um, including if like a space is given to them or if friends are volunteering for them, you know, we were encouraging them to um, list that as in kind mm -hmm. on the income side and then list it as an expense on the expense side so that we get a, a full picture. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's just one, one area of clarification. Um, <laughs> Another another that I, I know has come up as a unique priority for Northampton Arts Council is um, in the realm of community impact mm. that um, we don't just measure that by attendance numbers that you can be a, an artist applying for a workshop for yourself uh, if you can demonstrate that this is necessary for your evolution as an artist and contributor in our community and so like kind of um, just spelling out some things that might not be so clear upon first first glance. Mm -hmm. um, so if any, uh, I, I can run through other notes if we wanna right. use this time for that, but um, I'm also like eager to hear um, if anyone has from, year, from years of reviewing these grant rounds, if there's any other um, points that you think would be really useful for applicants to hear prior to applying. Yeah, I think I, I think Esther's outline last year hit all the points that we needed to hit. I think that and I think and I am inclined to agree that it would be best to leave the largest chunk of time for people to ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, because you know it can be a lot of it be a lot of information if we get into that, and I think mm -hmm. that that you know that's like giving too much feedback on a paper that you're correcting for a student. You know, it's just mm -hmm. I mean, what's the point? I mean, we don't need to show off for ourselves. We want to be helpful to people, and yeah. I think highlighting important points is the way to go. Maybe you cover. Um, it covers support materials and how to do yeah. that. Yeah. And the importance of support materials. Yeah, that's a Nina's good thing. gonna do that in her presentation. And then I was gonna, my comment to you, Rachel, about presenting when I used to present in my, in administrating it is that I feel like um, really uh, impactful, visually impactful or audio impactful uh, supplemental materials are important. Like. Resumes are great. Um, I think just examples of past work that are visual or our audio are really impactful. So we can really see, you know, how good and the high quality is, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I think, well, this is a good, um, I think um, Mina will, will cover like how to upload the documents, but it is unique to Northampton Arts Council that we do require supplemental materials. That's that's not a given for the other councils they might be applying to. So I think we do um, plan to emphasize that and tell them what all it can include, whether it's um, whether it's samples of their work or samples of past shows or publicity material or past program notes, or if the program doesn't exist yet, it could be an outline. Mm -hmm. um, 
so we can yeah. get into all the different examples yeah. letters of support will emphasize that it's required for mm -hmm. us and i think um if i remember correctly esther would like quote brian as saying that we are a board of visual artistic folk who like need this information in this way <laughs> and i'm paraphrasing but it's just like you know, understand that you're applying to an arts council and that like your art is going to be the best thing to speak for uh, your application. The only other thing, I think all those are awesome points. The only other one that I would want to emphasize is um, community support mm. in, in terms of project feasibility. I think a lot of times people have a lot of support, but don't think to enumerate it as such. So mm -hmm. Kathy, um flagged letters of support from, yeah. from venues and mm -hmm. galleries and I think naming that you can have a business partner or a collaborator write a letter of support to mm -hmm. you a few lines right something that people maybe don't think about um as a way to um boost their application and, and you know we you talk about in terms of you know well now it may not mean as much in terms of the virtual but you know before we used to have there was a whole big issue about places to show or to have and, and things like that. But that might be moot at this stage of, of for this particular round. So, you know, with, with, the, with the quarantine, because we, we, there was always issues around where can people show art, where can people have these, these shows or, you know, whatever, anyway. We, we've included online presentations. In mm -hmm. our, uh, right, our right. Space. So uh -huh. that, you know, maybe that's off the table. The Center for the Arts is open. APE is open. Right. Uh, they're having mm -hmm. shows there. Uh, um, I actually included a link to our grant page. So you can see how updated our grant page is. Mm -hmm. with our resources links. And it's a lot, I think it's a lot easier, like from my experience over the years of like working with everybody and um, all the links are on there to help uh, the people. There's the venue mm -hmm. links as well. Uh, but I think the idea that I take away from uh, us having a workshop is that we're accessible for questions. We can do a nice overview and then people that have specific questions that are not mm -hmm. handled online are in the overview. They can really get to the heart of it. And I'm sure that's going to, to spider into a lot of different conversations. Um, mm -hmm. So I look forward to, to you know, having those conversations tomorrow. Um, we can't, mm -hmm. we can't, you know, plan for everything. And I, I right. have full confidence that the, the our committee and, mm -hmm. and have a really nice workshop. And if anybody else wants to join, please do. Um, uh, I'll be setting up, it's going to be a zoom meeting of mm -hmm. board members. And then we'll be, get, we'll be, uh, trans, um, transmitting that to Facebook live, uh, tomorrow. So people will be able to comment on the Facebook live. Okay. Meeting. I will not be there. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's mm -hmm. totally fine. Mm -hmm. So me. that'll be good. I'll look at how many people are signed up right now. Give me one second. <clears throat> About 20. It looks like there's a couple of duplicates in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened, but. Maybe people, uh, maybe people like. You know, mm -hmm. But it looks like about 23 people. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. I think um, we should make a note or a speaking point when we open it up for questions that that question should be the kind of question that would apply to all applicants. It, it, and if they have questions about their particular, you know, project or work of art that like we should make ourselves available over email. Yeah. Um, That's a good idea. We can, we can put that um, in there. Uh, we have that email. It's also on the website as well. Um, how to contact us and how to contact the MCC if it's a technical issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, do we have someone helping um, to like uh, respond to comments? Well, I was hoping I was going to do that on Facebook, and okay. then that's why I'm just going to do the announcing, and then I'll be adminning the Facebook comments. Um, to, uh, and then transmit to that. But, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully all of us that are on there can have Facebook open, watching. But it will be weird with the. I have to turn off the audio and stuff. But <clears throat> try to add in the comments while you guys. So I might leave at some point, turn off the video and the audio, and just listen and 
<laughs> be adminning the Facebook comments. And I'll see if Peter's available tomorrow as well to help that too. Brian, you can also, if there are questions that you think it would be, like instead of responding to them in the Facebook chat, you can drop them into the Zoom chat for us mm -hmm. or comment, like if your camera or voice is on to come in and you might have weird feedback if you're trying to watch both. Yeah, I'm gonna probably mm -hmm. like audio, mute the audio in the Facebook one and then just have, just watch, just yeah. watch it, make sure it looks good and then ha watch the comments. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's there's gonna probably be like a probably a 15 or 20 second gap. Mm -hmm. So um, and then we'll make sure that we'll we'll ask everybody to save the comments till after the presentations are over, questions till after the presentation, mm -hmm. and then we'll have the long question period. Um, um Danielle and Freeman, did you want to sign on to the Zoom a little early tomorrow and check in before the workshop? Sounds like a good idea. Um, it's at six, right? Uh, let's see. Did you say six? I thought we said. I think it's at I had, seven. I had seven in my calendar. Oh, it's at seven. Oh, okay. Um, do you want to meet at six thirty? Does that work? Yeah, and then we can do a test feed to Facebook and see how it looks. I think that would be helpful. So where's that link going to be to the Zoom? I'll uh, send it. I'll send a, a. I'll send it right now to all of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. I in the, I'm going to change our meeting then to six thirty. Oh no, I can't. I think I need Brian too. What on where? On the, we have a Zoom meeting. I mean, we have a Gmail, Google Calendar meeting for. This, but I'm not the organizer. I can I'll change, change my, my calendar, but I'll work on that. I'll make it the organizer. <sighs> but and we can drop the Zoom link in there. So six thirty. Okay. I updated that. I'm gonna work on the um, LCC grant workshop. Mm. Um, one hour, 30 minutes. I was glad to see that uh, that guy who reached out to you that I wrote to signed up for the workshop. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Sorry. I looked, at some, I looked at some of his artwork. It's really great artwork. I don't know if any of you looked at it. It's pretty impressive before his, his accident that he talked about. Actually, Steve knows him. What's his name? Ryan Jacques. Yeah, Steve knows him, and uh, he did album artwork for Steve like a long time ago, wow. which cool. is interesting. Hmm. So he knows him really well. Yeah. Hmm. All right. And then another, Danielle, what email would you want me to use? The Amherst or your Gmail? Um, Gmail is fine. Okay. They all connect. I just deleted the original Google uh, calendar and then sent out another one with a Zoom link in it starting at 6.30 to 8. Um, so we'll do that. And then uh, 
what else was I thinking of? I feel like we did a good job on a little mm -hmm. bit of preliminary plans. Make sure, I gotta make sure I invite as well um, Mina Kim. And you, you're sure Mina's coming? Mina. Oops. Yeah, Mina is definitely coming. And I think it would also be worth it to invite the person that she copied on that call, on that email. Um, I'm on it. Uh, Veronica. Veronica Ramirez Martel. On it. I can add them. I just did. What's that? All right. Let's set up. Um, I'll make sure I contact all the people who signed up for the workshop tomorrow and make sure to send them a link to the Facebook Live. So they can and kind of send them send them a little bit of a I'll, I'll like draft a little bit of an agenda tomorrow morning, and then send out to all the people who signed up by their email and with their like agenda with like time points like and I'll share that agenda with you guys too, um, with everybody here too, and then we'll try to stick to that agenda. Um, I'm thinking you know, ten minutes for Mina or like whatever and then 10 to 15 minutes for us. And then most of the rest of the hour is gonna be uh, questions. And then we'll try to like keep the Q and A, like each question to like three minutes for each person. If it's like really crazy, if not, we can just go long winded if, yeah, an hour. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll play it by ear if you will. Yeah. Um, thanks for all the input on that. We feel like we're satisfied and ready for tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we should do the moon member update. Ashlyn is here. It's great. Um, Hi, Ashlyn. Hello. Hopefully they get qualified next week and get sworn in at the, or I don't know how they're doing swear, swearings now. Do you have to go mm -hmm. to like the, you might have to go put your, they do a crazy thing where you got to put your hand on a Bible or like something like that. And, no. They, they don't do, do that anymore? <laughs> they never had a Bible. <laughs> really? I had to put my hands on something. I forgot why. I haven't never put my hand on anything. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm gonna have to put my hand on, but <laughs> you'll have to go to the city clerk's office and then she'll she came to our meeting last time. She oh, did she? a bunch of us, yeah. Yeah, okay. There were a few of us who needed to be sworn in and she yeah. came. Okay. So maybe she'll do that again. Um Great. we got Mike. I can put my hand on my sketchbook. Yeah. <laughs> I I came a couple minutes late to this meeting. Did Ashlyn get to introduce her to the group or like um no I, really. I don't know if I missed that. <laughs> said hi and um if you want to introduce yourself, Ashlyn, feel free. If you yeah. want to wait till you're actually sworn in and doing it, that's fine. Ashlyn is here. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, hi, I'm Ashlyn Craddock. Um, I am a Northampton resident. I have worked doing booking for local comedy shows in the area. Uh, I have. Ex I am also a freelance digital animator and artist who uh, has had experience uh, working with film festivals in the Louisiana circuit where I was in college until I came up here, so. Where are you from originally? Is it? Jackson, Mississippi. Oh my God. Wow. I went to school in Southeast Louisiana in Hammond, which is about an mm -hmm. hour outside of New Orleans, about 45 outside Baton Rouge. Wow. How'd you get up here? Uh, by car. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I ended up, um, uh, long story short, um, I, ha I have family that uh, grew up in Vermont and um, uh, or I used to grow up visiting them and I knew the area and I was deciding between uh, Brattleboro, Burlington and Western Mass and this was third on my list and this was the most affordable and then oh, I just wow. ended up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we're glad you're here. And I'm glad that I know your resume so I can use all of your 
artistic skills to make our board awesome and our organization mm -hmm. awesome. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, nice to meet you. I'm glad you're here. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice to meet y'all too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The comedy comedy booking it sounds interesting to me. Yeah. You never I've never had anybody doing comedy, so mm -hmm. I'd love to pick your brain about that. Maybe we can get something to do at the academy or something. Yeah, it's fun. I did I do also do a lot of hosting and Oh, did cool. a lot of hosting until the pandemic hit so we'll see yeah, how that works i miss i miss doing live events oh it's so fun i miss I it too audience. i miss the audience um mm -hmm. thanks ashlyn we're happy to have you on our board yeah. Yeah. um all right and i will correct your name i didn't quite hear your name um in terms of spelling for the the minutes that go that went out so <laughs> Um, I can, I can. Write oh, I saw that. Oh, I, I see your name on there. So, yeah. but I know I couldn't quite hear when Brian announced you. And, and um, so I know I misspelled your name in, in terms of the minutes. So um, <laughs> minus minutes. Is it Ashley? I forgot what, Ashland. I think I put Ashland. <laughs> oh, yes. I've heard that one up here. Cause uh, Ashland, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also have Ant Alexander joining our board mm -hmm. and then Michael Abiatello. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are two more board members that will bring some interesting and unique skill sets to our board and mm -hmm. interesting points okay. of view as well. So I look forward to that. Uh, any more people that we can get to join the board, the more the merrier. We definitely need board members. Yeah. Uh, so if you know anybody, we have that. Uh, we have that email you can send that's like a that asks them and give some information oh good you well, share that with everybody you can copy and paste that mm. i can also send a word doc if you want mm. uh, attach to email you can share that around uh, mm. we're always looking mm. for new interesting points of view um yeah a word doc would be good actually okay mm. i'll uh, can do that right now mm. Mm. board recruitment email mm. I'm gonna send that around right now anybody else want a word doc mm -hmm. i think i think i saw that didn't we get it i think didn't you do it last last, last minute last month you shared it uh danielle yeah. i think you shared it as a google doc and yeah that was it a body of an email. email um so but if a word doc is easier it's easy yeah, yeah. So, I, well i just downloaded it saved it as a word doc <laughs> Perfect. See, you are tech savvy, Kathy. <laughs> you can do the nominations. <laughs> um, let's see. So that's the new member update. And, right. and mm. nice to have Ashlyn here. Mm. Uh, uh, online communications, Eamon's not here. So we're not, we don't have much to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I updated the first night website. It looks not great, but you know, I have, not a lot to go on, but there's actually, I'll share that with you right now. Cause we do have mm -hmm. um, a new, we have our uh, first night design again this year. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to I'll talk about that during the first night update in our ink board meeting. So mm -hmm. that's only the online. I haven't got any updates about our new logo. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll get some more work done on that probably in the next two weeks. Hopefully by the next board meeting, I'll have a new logo to show you uh, for ratification for voting. Um, that's about it. So I updated, you know, I updated the LCC, our grant mm -hmm. website. I, I shared that link there. Okay. Um, there's a lot of information on there. Um, and we updated, I updated the first night website and it looks mm -hmm. okay. I still have to edit the video so it's a little shorter. There's a fireworks video on there that runs a little long. And if you don't have good internet, it's gonna um, not look very well, not look very good. Um, there's some more things gotta do. Uh, we've already chosen, okay, I got, that's the first thing update. So moving along, uh, Poet Laureate, we have to start searching. Mm -hmm, right. Poet Laureate, have, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering if we should ask Karen if she'd like to extend her tenure as, as laureate because of, it's been a lost year. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. What does everybody think about that? 
Yeah, weren't there programs that just didn't get to happen? Mm. She had a lot on a lot of you know stuff thinking about it. I don't know what mm. you know. I don't know what that list of stuff is. I like the idea of asking. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody agree mm -hmm. with that? Mm -hmm. Is that for just a year? I'm sorry. That, and I'm would sorry. we extend a year or two years? I'm, you know. I I would say one year, and then we can start the actual search in July. Um, or maybe two. I don't know. Two years. I'm I'm up for. I, I'm. I think whatever you guys think. Uh, this is up to the board. Danielle is going to say something. Yeah. Is this push? So if we push, if we extend it by one year, would we extend the biennial? Like shift our biennial off cycle, or we would then have alternating poet laureate and biennial cycles. This would be nice. <laughs> Well, but yeah, it could be good. Could be, you know, it's just right, a, instead of having them both in the same year. Yeah, because then we'll already have a poet laureate that we can have on the biennial committee mm -hmm. that we don't have to choose a new person to like well, trial yeah. by fire. Well, and, we and, and also gives us a, 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 you know, in terms of publicity and event and something to kind of get excited about. We, we kind of share the, the fun. Yeah. We can look at Karen's poetry uh, mm. as a female wounded war veteran mm -hmm. uh it would be interesting ha to have mm -hmm. that uh and like look at for for our biennial like for themes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like her ideas and stuff for themes yeah. or or maybe yeah or just ask her if she has ideas you know she she's in the world so what what does she think about that might be so it's either we mm -hmm. ask karen to extend mm -hmm. Yeah. Or and is she mm -hmm. interested if this board wants to do that? Or we ask she isn't she gonna be on the new isn't she gonna be on the committee for the searching for the next one? Mm -hmm. She yeah. would be. Um so what does everybody think about extending it for Karen because of a lost year of events? I'm fine. General head nodding. Yeah. Yeah, we got a thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and plus we for we, one year yeah. and then revisit it again and see how this year goes. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see if she even wants to. Yeah, you know, she might want to be free of it. It's hard to don't mm. know. To be honest, she's been great to work with. She's easy to communicate yeah. with, and mm -hmm. she's very active. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, she has a great attitude. So I, yeah, I, I really like her. Yeah. So, um, shall I write her? Should I write her? Yeah, that'd be great, Alan. You could do that. Okay. CC, uh, CC the committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and, and Brian. And uh, yeah, me and then Kathy Service. Okay. If, if anybody else is interested in mm -hmm. more learning committee, let me know. We really need to have a. We need to get a literature nerd again. God, I want. I mean, yes. Yes. Jenny, so much. Yeah. I just connected you all by email with Cornelius, who oh. I is on the other side of this wall. Um, <laughs> he's a writer and um, get the on our board. Get Cornelius on our Cornelius. board. Yes, it's like Come on. I tried. I was like, you should join. And he's like, don't we spend enough time together? <laughs> oh, Pasha, God! You guys have plastic cups that you could connect with on the windows, and you guys stop. <laughs> um, no, but he um, he was definitely interested in the poet laureate work oh, um, and that's, that's oh definitely that'd be great so i connected you with him and i won't be involved after that like you all can, <laughs> okay. you can work with him okay. but he's a huge reader mm. I I, if is he a writer me. also poet writer danielle is he a writer also yeah he um so he graduated recently from the UMass from UMass he was an English major with a specialization in creative writing so oh, he was thinking oh, about God. MFA programs he does fiction he does poetry um yeah. but does he's he like know Karen I don't I'm not sure actually I don't think I'm not I don't think so um, he, probably he should <laughs> ask him has he ever come down my tenants downstairs they used to have salons uh Zoe Tuck and uh, her uh, I've been. You've been downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're really great. And that's Beautiful. so Vic Casada, who I think Ashlyn knows, mm -hmm. is a friend of mine, and we've collaborated on projects. 
Vic presented at your house, Kathy. Yeah. And yeah. also are kind of in the application process of uh, joining our board. And so is, I think, Gina, who also spoke at that yeah. series. So it's like, Kathy, you got to just go knock on your neighbor's doors and get them. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, I was going to ask her to, I was thinking about sending, you know, I keep saying to them, they, they have to apply for an arts council grant. I've been telling them that for a while. But they're great. But, Invite them to our um, grant workshop tomorrow. Yeah, I will. In, in fact, I was going to send the email April. to them. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they're great. They're good people. God. Um, um, if we're not um, looking for a new poet laureate this this year, I wonder if we might be interested in like a junior poet laureate. That we talked about that. Mm. That's a good reminder. And um, perhaps our current poet laureate might might be an active part of that process. It might be a nice way to connect a, you know, mm -hmm. seasoned poet with a rising one. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean to have a, 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 a sort of a junior poet laureate this year? Is that what you're saying? Right? Yeah, I mean, I imagine we can set the requirements mm -hmm. of a junior mm -hmm. poet laureate to be mm -hmm. minimal, but I think it would be such a, That's a nice idea. opportunity and, um, yeah. My um, Tai Chi teacher is, teaches at uh, the high school, Suzanne Strauss. In fact, since oh, when the yeah. um, uh, quarantine started, I get every day she sends a poem out to a group of people. It's incredible. It's wonderful. Wow. It's great to get that every day. Yeah. So, Rachel, you're thinking at the high school level? Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I, I don't know, like it's such a weird time for students, but maybe it's the kind of thing that that would kind of shine a light on us on mm. some students who mm -hmm. are mostly operating virtually. Um, Great idea. I love the idea yeah. of there being every other year of, of sort of major poet laureate and then a junior poet laureate. Oh, that's nice. And having that mentorship be built into mm. the process. Right. Um, yeah. would be really, really nice for young students. Mm -hmm. um, if you're if there if that's if you're interested in in you know the junior and stuff, I'd be willing to talk to Suzanne and and pursue that. I mean whatever you all think. All right, I'm back, sorry. Um, I was just uh, communicating with the head of the, the Northampton Mural for Diversity Project. Not the head, but one of the collaborators. Um, so how are we with the Poet Laureate Committee? We're gonna ask Karen for another year. Yeah, Alan's and gonna write to her, ask her to extend for a year. And then Cornelius mm -hmm. is going to join the Poor Laureate Committee. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And Rachel just brought up having a junior Poet Laureate mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and working on that now. Um, that's up to, if we can get a subcommittee to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can work on that. I think the thing about it, but should we check first if we ask um, Karen? I mean, because if we do get a, a, um, a junior or a younger person, would it, you know, what if some, sometimes some poet lawyers may be amenable to, to work with mentor people, some people may not, you know, mm -hmm. so that could be, uh, you know, we'll what we, Karen says first, and then if she agrees, then we can, mm -hmm. we can bring I'll that pursue one. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. junior mm -hmm. Okay. Lawyer. Um, I just like there to be board uh, buy-in on any of our new endeavors. And as long as there's that, I would like to, then we could pursue it. But mm -hmm. sure that okay. Karen is, uh, 
um, is willing to do extend it for a year, and then we should definitely explore. Yeah, I'd like to have, you know, a good contact at Northampton High School, but like find yeah. out what literature professor there is, or English, and who yeah. focuses on poetry, and if there's yeah. some kind of elective there. And I don't know if Freeman can work on that. Yeah, I yeah. I was saying you missed Brian, my um, Tai Chi teacher teaches um, at um, at English at the high school, and um, and so I can ask her. And in fact, I I said earlier that. She's been sending out to a group of us every day. I get a since the quarantine started a poem. She's, really she's nice. agreed to do that every for a year. It's That's really nice. Wonderful. But does she does does do they teach poetry in the high school? Is there an yeah. elective? Is there a section? Oh, I see. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I know she's. I do, all I know she's. Ellen, do you know what Suzanne? If that how it I know Suzanne. I I don't know what they. You can doesn't. Know. Can you hook Suzanne up with Freeman and Art and Lori because they're they're the school, they're the okay. school subcommittee, and then he can. Okay, I'll see if she. Yeah, yeah. That we need mm -hmm. to pass if we want to do anything in the, within the school, mm -hmm. um, or he could talk to the the also. Anyway. The well, whatever. I mean, I've just offered that, so whatever. Oh, that's great. That's great. But you already do a lot, so let's. Freeman does okay. a lot too, but he wants to do the school thing, or maybe Lori. All right, right. Yeah, let's get Lori on it. <laughs> <She's not here. laughs> yeah, I guess she can't come today because she had a flu shot and she had a weird reaction. So, oh, she um, so that's you know, guys. Good. I'll go ahead, please go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, um, Kathy and Brian, I'll I'll put together a little letter and run it past you before I send it to Karen. Okay. Thanks, Ellen. Um. So that sounds like we worked, did some work on the public laureate, poor laureate. The public art thing. Uh, so I have a new update. I worked with the group and they have a location. Uh, Yay. It is the uh, underpass uh, at the New South Street, which is the right where the bike trail is that ends up in the oh. behind Pulaski Park parking lot. There's a, there's a big set of bricks right there, a big stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where it's happening. It started today. They started cleaning up the space today, I think. Um, mm -hmm. They're really excited. They're fully funded over $10,000 in grants and fundraising. Uh, so wow. that project's, I also sent an email to everybody. Looking for, for volunteers, but then I just, they just, they were texting me saying that they only want people they know oh. uh, there because they're working with kids. But there's other days when there's not kids there. So maybe they, the people can still come. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So Monday, Friday, you can go work there with them, but on the weekends are like, I don't know what it is. So the weekends, the kids will be there, but Monday through Friday is just adults. Um, so they want to do Corey checks for everybody mm -hmm. to work with the kids. Wow. They're gonna, they're gonna have, yeah. So that's gonna be going up, which is really cool. Um, so that's that update, and I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we found mm -hmm. somewhere for them. I worked with the city and got permission from uh, the DPW and the mayor's office, and then we worked. Mm. What, Good work. Was there a particular reason why that site was picked? They wanted. That's the site they wanted. Wow. And there were a lot, Ashlyn. There were difficulties trying to secure a site other places that people, you know, for various reasons. They, their first picks were all privately owned buildings, Ashlyn. And we have no, uh, we have to ask property owners and get express written permission to put a mural on a, uh, a building in Northampton unless the city owns it. If the city owns the, the, the place, then we can. We can, uh, I can work within the city and then ask for permission to put a mural up, like, you know, in the school or in any other thing the city owns. Um, they had a really difficult time, the group, uh, finding a, a, a building owner in Northampton that would put up a mural. I did a lot of work and background work trying to get contacts and collaborating with different property owners that I know, but they're, it's very, very difficult. Um, I've been working on public art since I've been in this position and it's been really hard over the years. Um, yeah, thank you for that insight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So they, we got really frustrated because I've been, you know, Danielle and I have been part of trying to really push this uh, mural along and, uh, um, you know, every property owner, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, it's a great idea and blah, blah, blah. And then in the end, it's like, uh, they don't want it on their building, which is really uh, disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and moving forward, they were looking for this. They 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 said they were interested in this 
this that, that space that they that they, they did that they asked and I knew the city had some kind of ownership over it so then I worked within the DPW and the mayor's office and I got them permission to do it there so is this the building that's right by the on the so it's on the bike trail that's right by where the bridge is you know where the bridge is so yeah so say you're coming from downtown Northampton you're going through like the parking lot Pulaski Park and you go on Come, coming from the Florence direction or mm, no. let's see uh do you know where Veterans Park is the skate park yes I know where that is okay I, I know we're both Pulaski and Veterans okay so if you're going from Veterans Park on the bike trail towards Pulaski yes so that's the direction I thought okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that over, little overpass yeah. that underpass right there the underpass. Where there's, mm -hmm. there's like really good actually like throw ups underneath the bridge and then there's like a big stone that's all blank it's on that it's going to be on that big stone all those stone blocks um we did get permission to do it at thorns but because of the location of where they wanted it it didn't really work out because they would need to get a lift and they don't want children working on with the lift and things like that mm -hmm. so there's a big collaboration with children and i can share the proposal with you right now actually actually so yeah the idea of the the whole thing okay i'll do that right now mm -hmm. um i have a i have a question about the site which maybe is more something that needs to be redirected um to other departments in the city but isn't that a pretty popular like mm -hmm. residence for folks mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. A homeless all hang out there yeah to say more frank yeah Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. not the side you're thinking of okay because um, i believe there were like pretty substantial encampments mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. where they're during underneath the, the, the right underneath the bridge there used to be a lot of people but there. uh not on the not where we're thinking not where you're thinking okay. there's already a, a mural the campments are usually like where all the um uh wood chips are and then there's that already like there's a mural that's already behind there when okay. we're thinking about the other the embankment that goes on like almost like a like a 60 degree angle they're all stones and there's never a campments up there okay that's not not coming down to clark ave it's 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 going into the parking lot of um where the round round um houses give me one second i'll just text you guys a picture all but right this is the, the visual We'll get the visual on this. It's, uh... We are visual. Yeah, we are a visual <laughs> board. <laughs> Let's see. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. mm. Here they come. They're going in the chat. Oh, 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 oh. Hopefully you guys get them soon. It's in there. It should take a little bit. Open. Hmm. Here's another one. So I'm sorry, can you say where this is again? <laughs> um, okay, here's another way you can do. say if you were in Pulaski Park and you walked down to the parking lot that's behind it and there's a large residential building on the right hand side yeah. as you're walking oh, down and there's an underpass that goes on the bike trail to the right. It's right underneath that underpass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Because I used to see people, you know, because I, I used to work at Roundhouse and um, Round, and yeah, pe there'd be people underneath there where, where that is too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. They usually hang out when it's raining. Yeah. Um, and yeah. use it to avoid yeah. uh, harassment in the park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the mural is going to go on the slant. Yes. 
And are they painting the stone directly or are they like filling it in? Is there any like- They're gonna paint the stone directly. I don't know all the technical specifications. I didn't get it. Do you, uh, am I on that list? Oh yeah, I see, yep. In the chat. Yeah. Oh, it's in the chat. Ah, mm. uh, I see, thanks. Mm. Not down there. Yes, I, I am still wondering though, if in any way, I mean, I get also, this isn't necessarily like our, you know, problem to solve, but if there's some advocacy that we could do that might be useful, if this project might like inconvenience people or displace people over the course of the week, cause it's crummy weather. Um, I, and I, I live near there, Danielle, and I've, I haven't seen anybody camping there. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's just more of a communal spot yeah. during the day. Yeah. Um, here, I'll, here's another picture. I got a screenshot from Google Maps. I think earlier this, in the summer or uh, toward the end of the summer, I saw tents in there also. Yeah. I think people were sleeping in there at one point. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been there recently. I, I, I go by there you know, um, pretty consistently because I live right next mm. to like Veterans Park. So, um, mm. And people haven't been, but now that the weather is changing, I don't know. But I don't think they're going to, again, they're not going to be displacing anybody because they're going to be working on the other side, Danielle. Um, so there's enough room. I just sent another screenshot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a better idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, I also, yeah. like, I have confidence. I know that the organizers are, you know, the organizers are coming from a Black Lives Matter activists group. Like, I'm, I think that they're going to be like well positioned to handle like inter any interactions that come their way. I think that they'll be fine. Um, I guess I'm just like worried if it's a spot that is sometimes used as a home or as a refuge. The message is good, but like, what are the optics that the city will support a public art project at that site that potentially becomes like a, a tourist attraction or, or a foot traffic destination? Like, I don't want this to be misconstrued as the criticism that the city got for putting planters up as, an, as a way of um, like, pushing out our houseless people in downtown. You know, I just don't want this to be like couched within a context of, of that process and that, that habit that some of our officials have. And I know that's not, I know that like we just spent months and months trying to find a site for them. And this is the one that came through. So I'm really happy about it. But that's like my, that's like the thing that's in the back of my mind that I'm a little concerned about. Yeah. which I don't know maybe people aren't maybe people aren't thinking in that way maybe you know I don't you know I don't know if the I don't know if, I mean I'm I don't cross paths with homeless very much but my uh, singing group's been singing downtown every we've been meeting for our weekly rehearsals downtown in the parking garage behind the police station mm -hmm. and almost every single week one or two homeless people are there to hang out and listen mm -hmm. and it I don't know and they chat in between and stuff mm -hmm. um it's left me with the feeling that they want to interact with the public mm -hmm. in this kind of positive way yeah and I mean I don't know if this might encourage that or not I don't I'm, I'm not sure what to tell you about mm -hmm. it I have no idea it's just my experience on a Wednesday evening when uh, you know people are coming and they're not sleeping when we're there, obviously. Mm. I think anything we could do to make this space friendly and accommodating to everyone, regardless of whether they tend to sleep in this area or just hang out in this area or passing through, 
like I think is great and I and I don't I don't want it to be seen as an attempt to disrupt Mm -hmm. the norm that happens there so like Mm -hmm let's put some benches there so that people can like appreciate the art and interact with it and talk to one another, but not benches that have like the ugly armrests that are constructed yeah. people, you know, like, or the armrests that are designed to force people who don't have homes out, right? Because there are like things that happen in cities that often are unfriendly mm-hmm. to people who don't have homes and who use the street and use public space as, as a refuge area or as a safe space. So I just don't want this to... I don't know. I don't know if there's like a way to convey that to people who use that space. I don't know if there's a way to convey this other context to the to the organizers if they're not as familiar with it as like some of us are. Also, as someone who grew up around New Orleans after Katrina, when a lot of mural <laughs> work was being submitted, um, there what what the murals tend to do is yes, bring more foot traffic, which also brings in more patrols regardless so that just Mm -hmm. becomes like a factor that's just going to happen Mm -hmm. so if this is put in there I feel like so I guess the question is what to do I think the benches is probably like a good idea ones that do not have the stoppers on there and other ways to promote the and keep the community that is already there consistent you know so but yeah that that's another thing is like if there's increased patrols and if people are complaining by visiting the areas, I've, I've interacted with the homeless people in Northampton and whenever there's just one complaint, I've noticed the police do talk to them and do tell them to move. I've seen them, seen the cops tell them to move from one side of the overpass bridge that's over by, um, close by the roost, by the bike trail. I've seen them made them move underneath where the rain is coming down because someone complained that they didn't like walking past them. So like, they're going to run out of places to go. Yeah, yeah. It's going to become a problem. So I have a lot of experience um, downtown and living. I've been living downtown for 15 years and I used to live right across from the academy and now I live not next to the skate park and I think putting anything on the space that where the wood chips are is like either it's benches that are friendly is not a good idea because it turns into a place where people pitch tents and taking any square footage of space for having people to be able to pitch tents there is a bad idea so I think the way it is now and just adding the 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 interaction with houseless people in Northampton are gonna is gonna happen everywhere. The interaction of police with ho- mm-hmm. houseless people is gonna happen, whether it's underneath the underpass or on Main Street or on South Street or on King Street. It's gonna happen everywhere underneath the mm-hmm. underpass where you're talking about action as well. Yeah. Um, I think adding the mural there, uh, um, the the traffic might go up, but it, it is like a it's the bike trail between East Hampton and Northampton. Yeah, people are going to have that interaction anyways, yeah. and hopefully it's a positive one. And um, and I don't think it's up to us as the arts council to um to try to change where how that space is used because it's used in a really uh, I think in a in a very efficient, mm-hmm. a very constructive way by people pitching tents there that are mm-hmm. houseless. And it's like in the winter, it's going to be all winter. It's going to be about seven mm-hmm. to ten tents there um all and it turns into a little community and if we take any space away from there there's going to be less people to be able to pitch tents there that's my experience um because i walk from my house to downtown at least three or four times a week and i pass that all the time and okay. right now there's nobody there but now it's just started raining mm-hmm. it's getting colder tents are going to start to go up there and I, I i look forward to the interactions of between the conversations between the the, the mural organizers and the people painting and the people that are going to be houseless and hopefully they get excited about something like that happening in that mm-hmm. area um but i'm a optimist and i you know i don't think the city needs to do anything that's my opinion though again and from mm-hmm. my experience um i think in other areas in our city there could be things that that are done that can make it more open and easier for people that mm-hmm. are houseless to to be part of our community, but that place is like a, definitely a refuge that I feel like, you know, maybe putting a water source there or a bathroom. I think the, the city does have a, um, a porta potty there right now, which I think was a, a good addition. Mm, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, okay. 
that's how I feel about it. There could be benches in other places, not where I'm exactly where I'm thinking. And it's underneath the underpass where there's all these wood chips next to that right-hand wall from the screenshot I sent, the right-hand side. That's like basically where all the beds go. You know, adding other amenities there would be would work out better, I think. You know, if we put benches in other places, but not anywhere where we're talking about um, hmm. taking any square footage of space away from that place where people get to so shelter from the rain in the winter, um, shelter hmm. from the snow, um, those types of things. Uh, but this is a really interesting discussion. And I know we always have this conversation about um, the houseless, the uh, um, the houseless population in our, in our city. Um, I think most of the time uh, it's difficult to not want to be right. part of that solution. Uh, but I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk by it tomorrow and see what's going right. on in that area to make sure everything is good. Do you have any other ideas? And, I, and, I'm, and again, I don't want to be contrarian because I think the idea of trying to help over there, but the I, the optics the idea, Danielle, that you were talking about, um, I, you know, I didn't even think about it until you brought it up. I, but I think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. But I I still think it's a it's anywhere there's public art going up, especially something like that. And it's and it's I wish we had a more front and center main mm -hmm. street building to put it up on, but they were excited about the space. So um, I don't want to take that, you know, that type of excitement away from all those people people that yeah, no, I and I think it's a good I think it's a good space if that's the space that they want. I just hmm. someone like people live there. People live there and I just they they have a sense of ownership they have a sense of belonging in that space mm -hmm. and like we're saying yeah it's okay that like this group is coming in and putting art there which i get like that's our job and and i'm like glad that we're doing it and how do we also signal to the people who call that space home or call that space um like safety that this is still their space Right. Like it feels like even if like, I don't know, if I just showed up there after six months, it's art, I'd be like, oh, someone was here, you know, and and maybe I mean, I know that everyone has different relationships to space and we we're talking about public space like this is a normal dynamic that that comes up things change in cities often, but I don't know. I, I, I just, I want to be like sensitive to, to a built-in audience that is going to be looking at this every day. And I wonder the extent to which the organizers are aware of that. Like if the organizers are super aware of it, like that's great. And I'm not, I don't mean, I don't think there's going to be any like tense interactions. I'm, I'm thinking like there are people that are going to be looking at it and we're, we're talking about a portrait of someone who's staring straight out. What does that mean to someone who wakes up and sees someone staring straight out? It's very different mm -hmm. from thinking about the audience of like black and brown youth coming into Northampton and seeing themselves represented. It's another layer, mm -hmm. um, which I, I didn't raise in the planning conversations that we were a part of because because we didn't know the site yeah well maybe uh, we can bring up with the organizers we can, mm. who, who are the organizers I'm just curious uh, I, I i think i shared the uh the um the doc with you uh and it's what is the is he in, so they've they've assembled as the invincible project um, and it's a group of like artists and activists that met through the Black Lives Matter protests and they came together in the 413 Stay Woke, Stay Active Facebook. Oh, group. okay. I was wondering if they were connected to that. Yeah, okay. they are. Um, and it's just like a lot of local artists, uh, um, arts teachers, arts educators who kind of like formed a little arts collective and then umbrellaed under the Invincible Project, which I think primarily works with students in Amherst Public Schools and Holyoke Public Schools. Brian, I think those are the public school districts that they work with to connect mm -hmm. students with arts programming. And they've been doing these workshops over the course of like many months. They've been doing a really, really great job. And I just think that if they knew the, the site that they were gonna use six months ago, I like, I'm so confident that they would have like involved mm -hmm. the people who frequent that space in yeah. the planning, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's not too late. Like they might like interact with folks this week and be like, yeah, join us. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say like, like 
I don't even know if we need to encourage it. Like I feel like they'll do it anyway as part of their mm -hmm. practice, but just other things to, sorry. I'm just like thinking out loud to everyone. <laughs> sorry. Oh, well, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I, I appreciate the, the insights. Uh, so, oh, I'm going to walk by there tomorrow and see what's going on and see what the, the population is. I understand what you're, you're thinking about the encroachment piece, um, but I also think there's a positive aspect of it too, yeah. more engagement. Um, and people, just like other community members, like, you know, activating the space is nice as well. Um, so I, I think we are have to see how it goes. Well, I sort of wonder if there's any, so because the group doing the art project is literally stemming out of a defund the police, Black Lives Matter movement, I wonder if there's any like communication that we can facilitate between the collective and the city. Mm -hmm. And that would include like the mayor's office and public works mm -hmm. and the police department about like the intention behind the public art project, which they very clearly state in their proposal. And then maybe give them a little bit of guidance in coming up with language about how like we desire the space to be used. And I know we can't say like, oh, we don't want the space to be unfairly policed, but I wonder if we can actually call Ashlyn's point to light of how, you know, there's this often an unintended effect of like over policing areas that have been beautified. And like, we don't, that is not the intention behind this project. Like instead we want this to be a, a community space, a space mm -hmm. where people feel welcome and comfortable. And we ask that like when <laughs> police are in this area that they're mindful of the fact that they are like guests in this space, just like like the rest of us. I don't know if that's overstepping. I feel but... like this is another committee that's just been created in Northampton. <laughs> that we, we can uh, take that, this issue and bring it to that committee. What is it, the, the police commission yeah, committee? Right. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just give it to them, Danielle? You can contact them and we'll bring it to them. We're going to move forward this meeting. It's 852. I appreciate all your input. Um, schools tabled, volunteers tabled. Mm -hmm. And I think we can close the, can I have a, a motion to close the municipal meeting? Mm -hmm. Move. I make a motion to close the municipal meeting. Oh, I'm, never mind. I'm sorry. I'm not on it anymore. I will. Freeman. <laughs> Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And then Danielle or Ashton will contact the police commissioning mm -hmm. committee about uh, not over policing the new mural location. And they can bring that up to the police. How about that? Um, okay. <laughs> uh, can you give us a Go ahead. quick overview of first night? What yeah, you, I'll do a quick. So as you know, we're going online. I have yet to hear from PBS. I'm prodding them. Uh, yeah, Brian, was that Maxie Jackson? Was it Jack? Is yeah, that the Maxie name? Jackson? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah so we just met him. I shared the first night website. We have the design. It was by James Hindle for the first night poster um, printing. So the idea I have to raise money mm -hmm. uh, for first night is that I'm going to print a bunch of merch. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing 500 uh hand screen printed uh um serialized first night posters so mm -hmm. those are going to be part of like uh if you like kind of like almost like a uh if you donate a certain amount you get a poster and a lapel pin that are going to be so i'm going to have posters and lapel pins at our first night merch mm -hmm. um and as opposed <laughs> to i'm trying to make up for like no ticket sales so you donate fifty dollars to first night, you get a a, a a poster and a lapel pin. I um, want a mask. <laughs> so that's no. Here we go. Well, I'm gonna take this idea and I'm gonna expand it now. Okay. Okay. So good. I'm also working on merch that's not first night branded. I'm gonna have Northampton branded merch, mm -hmm. and all this stuff is gonna sell at Cedar Chest uh, inside their store and then online as well. And we're gonna. We're gonna have it as part of our donation packages. Okay. I'm gonna do have Northampton um, socks, Northampton masks, and Northampton something else. I'm working with a merchandise uh, designer right now to do that. Mm -hmm. They're gonna sell that at uh, Cedar Chest, and they're not gonna take any mm -hmm. fees or anything like that mm -hmm. from us. All that's gonna be sent to us. So I'm working on mm -hmm. that. I'm trying to get that in there 
during the holiday season. Nice. So some of that merchandise sales can go towards the making up our losses for ticket sales. Mm -hmm. So Good. that's those ideas. Um, we have most of our artists already confirmed and all the emails have gone out saying you're confirmed or not confirmed. Um, we have a lot of programming. Uh, so we're really excited about that. We have the 33 Holly books, studio space books for all of October, November. So we're gonna have a preload, a lot of pre-recorded content. And, um, and then we're gonna do similar to the trans performance where we're gonna have uh, post on the day of and a couple artists during the day, but then we're gonna mix it with the preloaded content. Uh, we also are, I'm doing, you know, the same kind of thing where I'm, I'm offering uh, uh, 15 second and 30 second spots to, uh, to our sponsors, our local corporate sponsors and local business sponsors. Um, and I'll be helping them to produce some of their content like in State mm -hmm. Street and some other places. Um, and that seems to be, and they're gonna get posted mm -hmm. too. So, that's how I'm going to be raising money for first night. Uh, I'll have Steve on the call next year, uh, next month, talk about some of the programming, but it's similar. To, again, we're going to do kind of like a, a funds drive during as well. I'm going to start to go fund me probably a month before with like the, the prizes. Hopefully um, I can figure out how to put the prizes with it. Where if you donate $50, you get a poster. If you donate a hundred dollars, you get like socks and whatever. I'm going to figure out all that pretty soon. Um, and then we'll do an ask to the to the greater the, the greater community to in, in lieu of buying first night buns, please come out and buy some, you know, donate mm -hmm. and get these interesting first night merch. So that's kind of the what I wanted to talk about for first night. Great. But everything's on track. Um, I updated the website. <laughs> no subcommittee with the, the, the police. There's no subcommittee NAC takes on NAPD. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Arts Council. Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Art is activism. All art is <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting. I could probably do that, but uh, I don't. I don't. I can talk to. Uh, I could talk to um, Ben at Port about doing that, but um, that's I'm mm. kind of Northampton stuff because you know we could probably do Buster Mask. He might want to do it though. He's uh he's tough to deal with business wise. Oh I know. I don't know if we could do like if we could do a flat licensing fee for it. I I know he's I don't know. I I it was just like a thought because we did talk about working with um uh New England public media. So yeah. I thought there is a broader audience. Yeah. If I hear from them, yeah. more stuff. that'd be that'd be cool. I still like the ham ham parts. Yeah, I like that as well. I'll, I'll talk to, I'm, I'm working with Nate Duvall, does a lot of merchandise stuff, and oh, good. Um, we'll talk this week and see what yeah. we come up with, but I'm definitely going to, first night lapel pins and first night posters, mm -hmm. uh, hand screen printed ones, and then I'm going to, all the other merch, I'm going to have it to be a more general thing, so people can just, you know, if you're not into first night, you can still donate and get something that's like either best for Massachusetts or our, uh, I love wearing my best in Massachusetts when I'm outside of Massachusetts, when I'm like in like Vermont or something. You're like, yeah. Oh, really? Wow, I didn't even know that. Can yeah, I, I wear it when I'm like not in town anymore. Um, yeah, that's the, those are good ideas. Um, art is activism. I I agree. That's one aspect of it. Be a good theme. <laughs> oh, it, it affects our politics, whether we want it to or not. That's true. The subcommittee is just the public art subcommittee being very intentional about how we think about how our space is used and yeah. how we advocate for the people who use our space. That's all. Um, I agree. So mm -hmm. first night update, that's about it for now. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting to hear from 9 p.m. So all right. uh, I put in a call and I send them an email and they still have a response. Mm. So I think they're, ah. they're on the fence about it and I'll, I'll, I'll mm. bother them mm. at the end of the week. But uh, everything's going really well. Uh, we got the Community Foundation grant as well for three yeah, Wonderful. Yeah, that was great. Great. I'm um, excited about that. Uh, and uh, mm. we're still in decent financial shape, I guess. Mm. But uh, it worked, Brian. So it's nine o'clock. I do have a question from yeah, our meeting before. Yeah. 
did you ever got, get in touch? Because the you know, having just done the minutes of the meeting, there was a long conversation about um, the ink board participating in you know the whole notion of scoring versus voting and blah blah blah. How do, how was that um, resolved? Uh, we haven't resolved it. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So you didn't you didn't hear anything back from the uh, MCC? No. Okay. Uh, I'll talk with Mina about that tomorrow, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, gotta, I gotta go back in those minutes and look at them again because I didn't get a chance to look at them and I'll make. No, sure. that's right. I might. I know. Well, I just know because I'm going back and listening to it and everything like that, trying to make it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. I, I haven't really. I have. I forgot to. to, to contact that's right. About that's right. That point, but I'll have a conversation with her about it. Mm -hmm. We tried to put together a call that didn't really work out again. So. Right. Again. Okay. So I'll go back in those minutes and make sure that gets taken care of. Mm -hmm. Um, this public art. Oh, got it. Who wants to join the public art subcommittee? We got to do that next meeting. Uh, mm. so. <laughs> um, thanks, everybody. Great. Uh, any new business anybody wants to talk about? Mm -hmm. No. Well, I'll see some of you tomorrow at 6 30. Mm -hmm. All right. Have right. Make a motion. We we end. Uh, we conclude or uh, this uh, the ink adjourn. part. Let's adjourn the meeting. Okay, we got. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rachel, okay. you can vote on this one too. You too, Danielle. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Yeah. yeah.